Hi friends. If you click to check out new shades from Lisa Eldridge, her True Velvet Lip Color Collection, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia, if it's your first time here. And if you are returning, well, thanks for coming again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. I'm going to take off these glasses so we can get started. I've never had the pleasure of experiencing experiencing Lisa's lipsticks. I do know of Lisa. She is a makeup artist as well as a YouTuber here on the digital space. I think I first heard of Lisa from Michelle Wong, of course. Michelle Wong is the resource and mecca of all things luxury makeup and skincare. I was intrigued as Lisa's lipsticks are very highly spoken of. I missed out, I think, on the first round and the hype was real. She had said this was the only restock she will do this year. And if you're not gonna get them, this time you gotta wait till next year and I was like okay I'm on it. If you haven't heard of Lisa Eldridge, I pulled up her Wikipedia profile. It says here, Lisa Eldridge is a makeup artist, creative director, and author, raised in New Zealand and Liverpool, England. She had her first big break when she was booked by Elle magazine to work with model Sunny Crawford. Wow. In 1998, Eldridge teamed up with Japanese makeup and skincare company Shiseido, who asked her to create a brand new makeup line for the Asian market. Who knew? From 2003 to 2013, Eldridge was the creative director for Boots Number no. 7, where she was responsible for developing, redesigning, and relaunching the brand. Eldridge is currently global creative director of Lancome, wow, working across product development, advertising campaigns, and digital strategy. In October 2015, Lisa published her first book, Face Paint, The Story of Makeup, a New York Times bestseller. And who has that book? I love all things makeup history and Lisa laid out beautifully a lot here in terms of everything on the makeup timeline, in terms of iconic makeup figures, uh, how makeup started, the ingredients and how everything evolved depending on the time. It really all is so fascinating. And Lisa herself has quite the collection of makeup artifacts. She likes to collect old makeup and I think this is her collection here so you see there are a lot of compacts from history in terms of uh, obviously they're not made anymore but it's really interesting to check out and I'm sure it will be really cool to like check that out in real life. Let me know if you got face paint down below. These lipsticks are currently available on her website lisaeldridge.com. These are called the New Velvet and she has a video explaining the process behind her choosing these colors, why she chose the colors that she did. She went into how interested and passionate she is about undertones and finds that there are several undertones missing in the market and she wanted to create those specialized shades that could be worn by several people wide on the skin tone spectrum. It's not so much so the formula is not new, but she added new shades to what she calls her true velvet lipstick lipstick. Some of them are sold out. Velvet Muse is sold out. Velvet Beauty sold out. Velvet Myth. So quite a few have already been sold out, including some of the sets that come in the velvet bag. I picked up two sets as well as one extra shade. So we will swatch them all on the lips and make comparisons with my current nude favorites that I still wear from my collection. How does that sound? Each lipstick retails for well, 26 pounds, what is that in dollars? What is 26 pounds in US dollars? $33.35, that's the conversion, so. <laughs> Not as expensive as some. I mean, I would consider this to be very much in the luxury makeup realm of things. She had a pre-sale, I believe, a few weeks ago, and I was highly impressed by the shipping. It said pre-orders can be made and those orders will be shipped out on the 18th. I got my lipstick the next day, friends. I was shocked. I believe I picked up the new Velvet Collection and the True Velvet Collection. The new Velvet Collection, I believe, has a lot of her new 
nude shades and the true velvet collection has a lot of her reds now although i don't wear reds often i figured i would just take advantage because if this was going to be the only stock of the season and if i happen to love the news and then i want the reds and then they sell out i didn't want to have fomo you know what i mean and this was my first time buying from lisa so I definitely wanted to support and just try something new you know what i'm saying and with that said why don't you come in a little closer that's enough. Just enough space to see the whole picture when we swatch these shades. I'm sorry I look a little gray. It is raining outside. Mer. I appreciate the grayness. I could lighten you up a bit only because when it's too sunny, it makes the colors appear very warm on camera. And I don't think it kind of presents a true color representation of what I'm wearing. So we appreciate it, but not my favorite. This is the box as Lisa Eldridge on the front. And then you have like burnished gold on the sides here. True velvet lip color, the name of the actual lipstick. And I wanted to show you, this is one of the boxes that the lipsticks came in. This is her logo. I really love it. You have L for Lisa and then you have her lip and her signature uh, Beauty Mark mold beautiful dot on her face that is very much like what she looks like so really great representation of what she is and what she represents and she also has the same logo here on top of the box we're looking at velvet decade i believe this was in the new velvet matte collection and when you do buy the bag i believe each set retails for 75 pounds and if we do the conversion, $96.20. I don't even want to think about, I, you know what, the money has been spent, it's fine. True, in the new Velvet set, you get Velvet Decade, Velvet Fawn, and Velvet Muse. So these are all very nude types of shades. I have been wearing Velvet Fawn all week or for the last three days just to get a feel of her lipstick her formula how they wear all that good stuff let me grab velvet fawn first so this is what the actual lipstick bullet looks like it is absolutely gorgeous it's like a burnished gold my favorite type of finish you have her logo here at the top of the component and it's a magnetic closure which i feel is just very seamless in experience and packaging overall and you have the lipstick now unfortunately i couldn't help myself and i already uh, slapped some on but the actual bullet it's so interesting you see the texture or maybe it's hard to see on camera but it has like almost a very velvet, literally velvet look on the bullet. And all of them look just like that. And the feel of them is very interesting. I'm back on her website to gather any information that hopefully will help better understand what she is delivering with these lipsticks. The formulation is a cre The formulation is a creamy, hydrating matte with a slight sheen. It's not a flat matte. The color is long wearing and non drying to the lips. I believe all of that. I think although matte, it is hydrating and perhaps that gives reason why it is called velvet matte because, because velvet texture is still very soft, but the look is very much matte instead of like super shiny. These lipsticks are made in Italy. And they have a suggested shelf life of 18 months from opening. This is Velvet Fawn. Now it is very peachy in color. This is what it looks like with no liner on my lips. On camera, it appears very pinky in color. So what I need to do in order for it to translate as a actual and actual true nude, quickly going back to the page it says here a pretty and delicate fawn shade inspired by the classic 90 shades in lisa's vintage makeup collection face paint with the addition of skin lifting lively undertones to make it extra flattering oh and all lipsticks are cruelty free so the pinkiness from my lips already i think adds to the lipstick and kind of presents it as more of a rosier tone so what i like to do we're just gonna quickly wipe that off and the application of these lipsticks are incredibly smooth i mean it's remarkable in terms of 
really she had achieved that true velvet feel but still with the glide, the glide is amazing, super smooth and very plush and soft on the lips, not drying whatsoever. It's actually quite amazing. So again, here is the color of Fawn, but what I like to do, because I have several lip pencils that I rotate through, I'm gonna take Mel's and Christian Aldette's pencil in smooches, which has been one of my favorites that I've been using extensively. And let's put that on all over. I like to put this just right. I like to cover the lip a little bit as well so that this tone can kind of steer Velvet's fawn, Velvet Fawn's tendency to move rosy on me. So going in with Velvet Fawn again. And I think because of smooches, because of its brown hue, it kind of helps steer the rosiness from Velvet Fawn and makes it appear a little more taupey on me, which I appreciate. So this together with smooches, I would even say together with my Makeup Forever, Anywhere Caffeine in 600, the Patrick Ta liners in She's Strong. I also have She's Bold if I wanted a little more contrast, but if I wanted to just to stick with like the nude shade, I will definitely go with She's Strong. And She's Strong is like a beigey type of brown that I feel pairs really nicely with Velvet Fawn. And if you wanna see it smooches next to Velvet Fawn just as a swatch, that's what that's doing. So you see here, she's strong. It's a little more beigey. Smooches offers up a little more brown. So it really all depends on how you want the nude to look overall in the end. It will determine what pencil you choose. If you want something a little deeper in tone, then go with something with a little more brown and richness to it. But this has been my favorite combination. And again, the feel of these lipsticks is just amazing. I can't get over it. They literally feel like velvet velvet pillows on my lips. And there is a little sheen, little shine, like Lisa says, but it's not shiny like, let's say, a traditional satin lipstick or even the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude lipsticks. If you wanna quickly see, I would say from my Natasha Denona collection that I currently have that the closest one will be Michelle. So Velvet Fawn has a little more pinkiness to it. This is Michelle next to Velvet Fawn. The only other one I would say will be Noah. Noah off the bat is just much more taupey than Velvet Fawn. So you see here, this is Noah going into Velvet Fawn. And then again, this is Michelle. I would combine all of these, if I'm quite honest, is very rare that I just wear one shade. I definitely love to layer. And this is Beauty from Mel Thompson and Christian Aldette. Beauty has a lot lighter of a color, is a little pinkier in tone. So this is what we're dealing with in terms of the color story that we have going with Fawn. Uh, Beauty, Noah, and Michelle. It's a party, but again, ultimately, I would combine all these shades together. Next up, we have Velvet. No. Oh, and I forgot to show you, she has her logo here on the side. I love these boxes. Do I need to keep them? No, but I'm a little bit of a hoarder when it comes to makeup packaging. I can't help myself. I even put the Lisa lipstick in here and then this in my makeup bag because I am so in love with this component that I don't want it to get scuffed or scratched in any way. So I go to great means in ensuring that does not happen. And again, super comfortable on the lips. It was always a pleasure to reapply these. In terms of long lasting, yes, they are, but given my job that I am always talking I know I talk a lot on here and I talk a lot for my job. Teaching and just projecting my voice and always going rah, rah, rah. I feel because of that, it might put on a little more wear on the lipsticks, more so than an average individual that does not have my type of job. So just keep that in mind in terms of longevity for me. It might not be as long simply because of the nature of my work. But still, I feel these quite long lasting. And while they are long lasting, they feel great on the lips they don't feel tight they just let my lips live as they are and again it's just layer of velvet skin on your lip in terms of the feel the color richness is there the pigmentation is there but not the heaviness or the 
the tightness of it. The lightweight nature of the texture is not directly correlated with the actual pigmentation. Like the pigmentation is amazing, but the texture is still very much lightweight and it is amazing. I usually don't wear rosy types of tones, but I feel like this is a very popular shade. I kind of want to dab some concealer. So I kind of want to make sure the, I want to get the actual color of the lipstick. Why am I so fuzzy? Velvet Muse is like a rosy type of tone. I'm trying to look for her shade descriptions on the website. A sensual, smoky, rosewood shade with a perfect mix of pinky brown. The pinky brown gets some friends. That's like the soft, smoky daily eye. And dirty rose undertones to make this shade super wearable across a wide variety of skin tones. All right. Again, this is a gorgeous shade. It definitely pulls a little pinkier on me, but I am positive if we wanted to steer it more brown, then definitely I will go in with a more brown lip liner. Going in with Patrick Ta's Precision Lip Crayon and She's Bold. I'm gonna take it around just with the lipstick already on there. So I think it toned it down a little bit, but ultimately if you wanted this to be less pinky, if it turns pinkier on you like it does on me, then maybe go in with a beigey brown lip liner first. Or we could always combine velvet fawn let's see what that looks like i think it lightens up the center of it it makes it a little more pouty i can't get over the consistency of these lipsticks i mean they are truly phenomenal in terms of texture is unlike anything i have experienced or own i applied a new concealer on the lips but i quickly wanted to show you charlotte's pepper and honey against lisa's velvet fawn because how can i forget oh we got okay hold on we got so much swatching going on oh yeah i think that's a little more beigey beigey brown than Velvet Fawn, absolutely. Like I said, combining all the shades. And here is Velvet Muse as a swatch. You can really see the pinkiness, rosiness coming through on that swatch. Velvet Decade is just, ooh, that is a gorgeous shade. And this is the last shade that comes in the new Velvet set. We're looking at a deep chocolate shade that is lifted and made very wearable by its blue and lively red undertones, which stop it from being a flat brown. Flat brown not allowed. This color is absolutely gorgeous as a light padded stain, as it's perfectly your lips but better. Shade with an extra mm, full coverage is the most decadent and glamorously modern vintage shade inspired by hand-tinted sepia fashion portraits. Love that. Why not? Let us do, I didn't see the video. She did post a YouTube video in demonstrating how she wears darker lipsticks as, darker lipstick, lipsticks as a tint, that if you are intimidated by these types of shades, but you still want to integrate them into your makeup routine, I think she does something like this, hopefully. And then she goes in like this. To, yeah, we're getting somewhere, hold on. And I believe she actually uses these as blushes. I believe I've seen her do that. That's beautiful, I love that. I very rarely do it simply because, you know, dirty fingers, but I'll get over it. That is a nice way to add a little extra color to the lip without fully committing to lipstick on both lips. But if you wanna see the full Kahuna. Cajones? No, that's not the one. This is a chocolate brown indeed. I will go ahead with my Makeup Forever Versatile Chestnut. In 610. Definitely clean it up a little bit. I love chocolate browns. I don't wear them so often because again, with all the talking that I'm doing all day, I feel it wears a lot faster than a nude or it rather appears more obvious than a nude when it wears down. I still need to wear this more often. It is such a beautiful shade seamless and easy to apply. Sometimes with darker colors, you have to be more careful and you know, staying within the lines so you avoid cleanup. But with this texture, it just makes it incredibly simple and easy to apply without worrying about those casualties. And there's no like teeth on lipstick. What? Lipstick on the teeth. They stay on the lips, they don't migrate. 
migraine. They feel absolutely beautiful. Top notch are the shades from the new velvet set now. And this is a first impressions going in with the reds. We're going in with the true velvet. That is velvet jazz, velvet ribbon, and velvet morning. And then the single one that I got was, where is it? The single one that I got separately was Velvet Midnight because I saw Lisa apply this on her YouTube video and I was like, I need to get it. I think it might have been available in a set, but I was just like, just get the one more and be done. Okay, just putting on a little bit of my CeraVe healing ointment. All right, we're back in business. And the bag, the bag is simply, I mean, this is so adorable and sophisticated at the same time. You got her logo, you got this beautifully soft plush velvet feel. I know I have two of them, but what are you gonna do? I like makeup bags, all right? Velvet Morning. Velvet Morning, what are you? Ooh, looking at a hot, fiery, bright orange red. That's exactly what it says on the description. Look at this, fresh. Woo! This is, wow. Look at that texture. This is a new bullet, so you can really see what this delivers in terms of, like, the... It is amazing. It's very hard to see. It looks like fabric. Fabric. Amazing. Going in with the fiery red. Let's do it. This is a beautiful color. The vibrancy and just the... It really just jumps out at you. Incredibly easy to apply. The feel of them, again, plush, soft, comfortable. It inspires me or moves me to wear these shades more often because again when wearing shades like this throughout the day i feel you could recognize the wear in them a lot more than let's say a nude but to really just i mean this is such a pretty color this is how it looks like friends what do you think it's getting so dark and very easy to remove this is a cotton flat cotton flat with my bioderma here is Velvet Morning. Look at that swatch. That's insane. Oh, I broke it. I broke it. I'm nudging it in. Dang it. I knew I should have been more careful. Velvet Ribbon. A vibrant, universal, classic, neutral blue red. I mean, Christmas is here. Let me be very gentle. So it's kind of hard on the first because kind of have to warm it up but I don't apply too much pressure so we're looking at that that's how it looks like next to velvet morning I actually like these better than Pat's lipsticks because I feel Pat's lipsticks the the matte trans ones have a little more slip and sometimes I feel could be a little more challenging to control although these are matte they don't have as much slip and I feel like a little easier to glide on the lips. This is not actually a real lip blush brush. I can't find mine at the moment, but a little cleaner. Again, this couldn't be a more perfect red. It reads very red on camera. It might read a little, like you could see, I think the blue undertone more in person but simply gorgeous. I, I couldn't ask for a better red. She's absolutely right. Classic indeed. And again, very easy to remove. Definitely I try to keep it contained when I'm removing red lipstick so it doesn't get all over the perimeter of my lip. In that case, I could go in with more concealer to start from scratch. Last up from the True Velvet set, we have Velvet Jazz. Yeah. What does Velvet Jazz look like? Let's see here. A muted earthy brick red inspired by the 1930s red lipsticks in my vintage collection. Ooh, I love what we're looking at. How gorgeous. This is so classic. I love the combination of like deep muted red with burnished gold. And here we have the first swatch. Being very careful here. So that's what we're looking at in comparison to the last two reds. <gasps> this might have to be my favorite out of the three. Vintage indeed. I totally feel like more of a, a sophisticated feel with this red. Definitely more muted and perhaps not as intimidating as like the last red we wore, which was very 
in your face true red this i feel because it's muted it just it plays a different role entirely but still very sophisticated in delivering that red lip again without so much punch absolutely beautiful i love this tone i just think it pulls the whole look together especially if you're going in with a very simple eye that's why i decided to go with very soft browns on the eyes and just some lashes so the lipsticks could really shine i love it so much lastly the single lipstick that was not included in any of the sets but i got solo because i mean this freaking color velvet midnight the deepest of the shades this dramatic blackberry shade lends itself perfectly to its velvet coat <gasps> oh my god that is absolutely gorgeous being very light here oh look at that i think next to velvet decade which was the brown shade of course we're lifting up all the lipsticks and the last one is the shade you're looking for here is velvet decade so that is it appears definitely more brown than plum than velvet midnight these lipsticks are so smooth incredible color payoff i mean you can really see the plumminess of the shade i love shades like this i love deep rich dark lipsticks i think it's just so appropriate for now as we roll into winter but again beautifully comfortable i would recommend that you wear a lip liner just to ensure that the borders of the lipstick stay within the perimeter of your lips it doesn't spread because unfortunately if you're very specific with how you like to draw your line or how you like to rely on liner to reshape your lip i think it will be helpful to use a liner first and that's what lisa does in her demonstration video she definitely goes in with the liner every time i might have i think i have a mac lip pencil that very much resembles this shade that i think will pair well with velvet midnight but isn't this gorgeous i have to wear this more often it's like oh, well i bought this lipstick so i'm gonna wear them more often i get into my comfort zone with nudes they're easier to apply they're easier to screw up on like with this type of color definitely you need the lip liner definitely need to be careful when you reapply during the day stuff like that i feel just wards me off wearing these shades more often but you know what i'm gonna get over it and do it so that is it my friends i hope this video helped if you have the true velvet lipsticks from lisa eldridge if you're looking to grab a couple of shades but you just needed to see them in action all my foundation shades will be down below for reference of course it's really always hard to tell on camera but again hopefully this kind of help steer your shopping decision and yeah until next time that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here with another review tutorial shop recommendations or favorites list take care and i'll see you again soon